Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classics Last Known Classics. This is episode number 1431 and double shot number, actually it's 1531, double shot 1425. Like I said in my last video, the first trade here is the finale for our trade series. Well, mostly a finale for our writers running this book. This is Superman Volume 4 Mythological. Written by Brian Michael Bendis. Art by Ivy Reyes. Of course, Danny Miki basically helps the inky for this book. Along with Ken McGuire and John Timms. The cover out here is by Ivy Reyes, Joe Perito, Alex St. Clair. This book contains the final nine issues of Brian Michael Bendis' run for the book. I will get to my final thoughts and my friend's TV, his opinion on this run. Now, things starts off with, it sits in a couple of different places. Now, John Kent is nowhere in these issues. Nope, he isn't. Where is he during this period of time? He's off in the future with the Legion of Superheroes. They mention it here. Superman starts off basically as a continuation of the truth story, the stuff with the, stuff with the truth, where he's fighting freaking Mongol. He's in a brawl with him for the first few issues of this book. And meanwhile, on Earth, Lois is just finishing up her book that she's working on pretty much since the start of this run, and she finally wraps it up here. And, well, of course, you have Lana Perrin here, too, who also puts on the Superwoman costume, which is so cool. Because Lana has not been really active very much throughout this whole run. I guess Ben has seen figure, though, since we this one, just featured Lana. We also have Mr. Bo we also have Dr. Bones of the DL pop up in here. Cameron Chase, which Lois and me so like, wait, where, where, where's your organization based pretty much destroyed by Leviathan? We managed to survive, no problem. Yeah, the D.O. are still active in the, in the DC Universe. Despite that, like, Argus isn't surprisingly. I'm not sure why Bendis got rid of Argus. I, I, I like the organization Argus. Why I get rid of it for? But yet, they brought back Checkmate. Yep, they brought back Checkmate, which Bendis is working on that right now. Along with Justice League. Mm -hmm. And eventually, of course, well, in order to stop Mongo and, of course, the, these other creatures who apparently... And we also have stuff related to Justice League Dark in here, because Superman does come back to Earth. Yeah, we actually have a few issues we focus on Dr. Fate. Yes, Dr. Fate for a couple issues. We have a you know, guest appearance first by the Wonder Twins. And then you turn a page, it's Dr. Fate. Now, under the helmet is not Kent Nelson. Nope, it's his great nephew. From the Doctor Fate ongoing series done by Paul Levitz. We also have just like Dark Pair in these issues, which is so cool. It's stuff related to We also have this creature known as Xanaroth, I think it's how you pronounce it. Yeah, this is mostly set up for the end of this run. And who this guy is is a bit weird. This stuff for they mentioned stuff that happened in Dan Jurgen's run. Now here's the thing. Uh Bendis is not ignore what either Dan Jurgens or Peter Tomasi did for Superman. He does not ignore it. He acknowledges it happens. He basically acknowledges the fact that Superman's life has been really weird the past few years, which that has indeed true. And of course they have Superman meet this creature. And look, here's Director Bones. Yep, Director Bones. Yep, he pops up in here. He's still very much active in the Marvel Universe. What's well, all the point of this guy called Zenru? Yeah, it's uh, for appearance by the Phantom King. Yeah. And we have stuff related to the Lana in here. Flashback. And we have stuff. We have this it's alien creature who lives in the Phantom Zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mostly instead of for pretty much the final story arc, mythological. And there's stuff with Checkmate in here. Yep. Yep, and then of course Superman flies out. Of course, the pe 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 the, pe the public knows that he's Superman, so he fights an alien who tries to do something really weird. It's kind of an odd ending with this final story arc. Mm -hmm. Eventually, of course, Superman apparently does pull out a call for help, and it's answered by the United Planets, something that's set up in the last story arc. Mm -hmm. Yep. This alien called Shamir, who tries to like, do a brief takeover, but he's stopped. But well, luckily enough, he's helped by 
when he gets after his long battle, he is helped by Hawkman, a Dominator, and some fewer aliens. The Night Planet Brigade. Yep, it's great to see Hawkman. I think this is... I don't think this is Carter Hall. No, I think it's one of the air Hawkman. And then we have Supergirl and Crypto. Supergirl wearing armor for some reason. Yep. And then the final issue, basic, the final pages are simply Lois and Superman dancing to Mary Poppins. I gotta admit, this actually is really good. I thoroughly enjoy this. I think the whole thing with that alien, that was kind of a weird way to end this book. But it was really good. It felt like an actual Superman book. Yep, I give this book a 9.5 out of 10. Final thoughts on super on the, on the Superman run. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis' run on Superman. Yeah, this is all five, four books of his run. You probably noticed, though, I got the first four, four books, basically. First three in hardcover, because I got Barnes Noble. This one I bought from Amazon. I really like this run. Now, my friend Tivia, he hates this run. He considers it basically a run that nearly broke him. Okay. I disagree with him on this. Now, I'm not sure what he read in this particular book, but this feels like Superman. This book is fun. Like, something I thoroughly enjoy. It's just, thoroughly enjoy this book. It's just so good. I think Ben did something different with the book. At least this book, like you read this, he actually acknowledges stuff that happened before, like with the Oz effect, the start of the run. Excuse me. That's perfectly fine. Other writers have done before, so there's not really much issue there. But people were worried when he started this run that he was going to divorce Superman and Lois and kill off John Kent. Well, he had Lois basically live in a, a hotel... Just so she can work on a book while Superman basically does whatever the heck he wants. Being Superman. That's fine. I have personally no problem with that at all. I mean, other writers, like, I'm sure that real life people who actually are novelists would actually do this. They want to basically cut themselves off in the real world while they work on books and want to have distractions. This, to me, is perfectly natural. I personally have never suffered through this because I'm not a writer. But... This, in my opinion, was definitely a good idea for Bendis to do. AGF John Kent, I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Especially since it's written in the book that Superman really wanted to see his son grow up. He really wanted to watch him grow up. And now he can't because he missed several years of his life. And that was the fault of his uh, revived father who somehow survived. Yeah. But at least that... We keep the family aspect about Superman. Yes, I know Fran loves Peter J. Tomasi's run for uh, Superman. And, of course, Dan Jurgens' run for Action Comics. I enjoyed them, too. I don't think they're terrible. I think they're awesome. I my friend Edgar doesn't like him very much. Because he feels as though it's too much nostalgia. Me, personally, love them. Ben, this is run for Superman. Because I just, with this trade here, that's actually it for, for Ben Michael Ben. This is for Superman. But here's the strange thing, though. This book will continue for another four issues under Philip Kennedy before C's publication relaunched as Superman, Son of Kal-El. Focused on John Kent, while Superman takes over the, so has the main, has the Axomic title. Yes, I personally love this run because it felt a little different, but not drastically different. Now, I'm not sure what Tivia basically saw that basically said that he, he said it's one of the he lists this book as one of the worst comics of last year, which to me doesn't sound right to me. Now this I vehemently disagree with because this book was good. I love this book; it's just fantastic. So what my friend Tibby was thinking when he basically made that particular list, I don't know. Like, I do disagree with several books basically on that worst comics of last year, like. Yes, I did point out, though, in a video to him, and I pointed in person, that the... He says, oh, yeah, for Teen Titans, all, like, 47 issues were bad. No, it was the Adam Glass issues were bad. Not the first 19. He did he did agree with me on that. But when it came to Superman, we're split on this particular thing. 
I mean, we have to not be friends because of the fact we we have a split opinion on Superman. But yeah, he agree. He he basically says book was terrible. Under Ben, this me, I think it's fantastic. That's my opinion. You don't think my opinion with great salt, but. All right, so yeah, moving on to Harley Quinn, Night and Day. This collect is eight to thirteen, and our Worlds of War one shot, written by Carl Kessler, artwork by Terry and Rachel Dotson. The thing is, they don't do all the issues in here. Nope, the other issues are by Pete Woods. Mostly, put you have basically. This is most like a lot of stuff for basically what we see in the Walking Metropolis trade with basically Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy going to Metropolis. Excuse me. Now, Harley Quinn uh, is drawn kind of weirdly in here when she's not drawn by the Dotsons. Like, we have basically a normal day of work, her hanging out with, with her hyenas, and then like. And then we have apparently someone decide, I think it was Pete Woods, decided to change, have her change off screen. Or apparently she couldn't finish getting dressed, where apparently she off her cleavage. Yeah, something she normally doesn't do that, or basically not have her gesture hat on, probably because she was, she was in a rush to basically get changed. Yep. That I thought was kind of weird. And then her getting stabbed in the shoulder. Which she does not get treatment for. And then you have one issue ends basically where she gets in a brief fight with Killer Croc. And having her, her being hold, like she's holding a doll. Oh, and by the way, that she has one, he has basically what he has two of his fingers on her breast. Yes, I am. It's so surprising. The fact that she doesn't have, that he doesn't decide to strip her naked and basically try to do something terrible to her. Why he's holding it like a lot, like a doll? Oh yes, we do have a brief flashback appearance of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Oh, and or and apparently, oh, apparently they change positions. Like, oh yeah, end this issue, holding her like she's holding a doll, and then like the very next issue, he has her hand around her throat. I'm like, did the editor fall asleep with this? And of course, he get off Killer Croc. She kisses him, and of course, oh, beats him up, gets away with him. him, him. And then we have the artwork abruptly changed to almost the style of the animated series by having Batman show up. The way you look a new Bat in the, in the Batman animated series. Where you have Harley Quinn in a robe. I thought this was really weird. And look, Barbara Gordon is Batgirl. Uh, for a panel. Then we switch over to Cassandra Cain. And then we have Robin. I think this is supposed to be Dick Grayson. I think it's supposed to be they creation that cost like a flashback when they were younger. Oh yeah, and then of course this Batgirl decides to throw off Cassandra Kane off a rooftop. Like, who the heck this person is? It's not Harley. And then apparently a flashback to the killing joke of all things. Where you have Joker wearing a wine shirt and shooting Barbara Gordon. Which if you're curious, though, like in the Killer Jack movie, Joker did strip her naked. Not the Raper. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That was a misconception that other people said. All he did was, after he stripped her naked, was basically take pictures of her. Why did he get the camera with her? And the whole assumption that he raped her, that was never implied at all. There was nothing that stated that basically when she was found, that she was found to be raped. Nope. All she, all they said when they found her in the movie and the comic is that she was stripped naked. That's it. Stripped naked. Now who this Barbara Gordon is, who this Batgirl is, it's clearly not Barbara Gordon because she's basically Oracle at this point. Maybe it's the time dispatch version of her. But it turns out, yep, it's her. Who is size basically a bit big fool, buddy. And there we have Batman showing up. And it's just pure fun, this book. Mm -hmm. And at one point, you have Batgirl carrying Harley Quinn in a very odd looking way. Yeah, where basically kind of holds her by the belly while being handcuffed. 
And it turns out, nope, this actually is not Barbara Gordon. This actually is Poison Ivy. Yeah, I thought it was kind of confused because of the red hair. So, yeah, the whole thing of her basically be, well, it was all just a mask. She's wearing a makeup. Yeah, this is in a period of time when she basically had green skin. So, she first, she asked you if you wanted to leave Gotham with her. And then by the end of the issue, and after saving her life, you have to worry about her. She does agree to go with her out of the country, out of the, out of, the out of town with her to go on a vacation to Metropolis. But here's the Our Worlds of War one shot, which is basically what Harley Quinn was up to when, when a bunch of aliens like the planet. Yep. What she was up to? Well, uh, just having some random guy follow her for a whole issue, not do a lot per se. It's a very weak one shot. And yes, uh, Carl Kessler wrote this, but the artwork is not done by... I don't think it's on Pete Woods or even the Dotsons. No, this artwork is done by a few different artists on here. We have Aaron Winsfield, Paul Grist, Paul uh, Chadwick, Amanda Connor, Jim Hobbiani, and Steve Lieber. Those are those the artists, and of course Aaron Winsfield... Yeah, these guys with the arc, it's like, the, like every couple pages. Like, it gets better as time goes on for this one shot, but then, of course, he finds out, though, because he thought this this kid was basically, he was child with, thought he was some woman's boyfriend. Turns out it was actually a big lie. And, of course, battling the team of Furies. Yeah, where this kid claimed to be Talia's fiance. Turns out it was actually a lie, and of course, it's just never seen him again. But the Worlds of War, the Our Worlds of War one shot, is something you, you you can skip if you want to. But if you want to read it because it's Harley Quinn, go right ahead. I will recommend people who like Harley Quinn. It's definitely good. This book, a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, and believe it or not, one more trade left to go for this run. Yep. Yeah, one more trade left. And you're thinking, really? One trade left for this rubber Holly Quinn. Yes. Yep. Excuse me. All that's left is Vengeance Unlimited. And that's it. Yep. That is basically it. One more trade left. And then that is it for this run. And look at basically the release dates for this for this for this uh run. Apparently, the first trade preludes and knock knock jokes released in 2007, and then it took over five years later to release Volume 2. And it, then, of course, that was released in June 2013. First was December 2007. Two was released in, that's this book right here, released in June 2013. Three was released in March 2014, and the finale for this release in September of 2014. Yep. Now, is there anything else left to go aside from like the final trade for this? What like what else left to go for Harley Quinn? Well, there is Gotham City Sirens, obviously. There is Batman and Harley Quinn, Batman and Mad Love and Other Stories, uh, Harley and I'd be Betty Veronica. That's it. Just a handful of trades. Yep. But I'll probably view them sometime in the future. Okay, so that's it for Stick With You. Next one's going to be Case Closed. Okay, next video. Bye.